Curiosity lingers at the office window. If you see Fola walking down the street, you might see her in a khaki suede coat, sleek at the waist, with a fitted belt and tasseled handbag. You might wonder if her hair is really hers and how she gets each braid to look exactly like the other. You might admire her burgundy lipstick and her quiet militancy. You might imagine that effort required to keep up with her quick, small feet. And uh, as you burn your hand on the coffee machine and finally admit to yourself, uh, you're a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> you see her scan her card. She's in the building. You might perceive her poised expression as unshakable, too sturdy for your own frailty. You sit in front of her and throw a nervous smile, like a small boy with a small bouncy ball and hope she will catch it. She raises an eyebrow of confusion, but greets you politely. But her thoughts are far away, and she carries a peculiar weight. Second generation Nigerian, oldest of four, anomalied her fate from Hackney with the first degree from NSC. Born and bred with a thick work ethic, parents loudly Pentecostal, younger sister living in a hostel, had enough of mum and dad and chucked UCAS for a Korean grime, but is always strapped for cash. Sickly relatives in need of remittances, closest friends now dispersed from Toronto to St. Kitts. She tucks these concerns away in the top drawer of her desk and gets on with work. Professionalism, professionalism, professionalism. She wants to be more silly in life at work but won't let anyone take her full mug. Don't ever do it, she thinks to herself. She asks if you want a cup of coffee. You lift your full mug and politely decline. You remember your seared hand. You remember just how stupid you are and wonder if you have anything to offer. But in the evening, at home, she longs for a friend and she Wrapped in her favourite blanket, is wrapped ready for bed by 9.30. She's wrapped her head in a satin scarf, an emblem of black girlism, and wrapped <coughs> in all too familiar familial troubles. And you think of her as you sip your cider and try to enjoy a night out with your mates, and try to be in the moment, but your thoughts are far away. And she... Well, she throws up a prayer and hopes her parents' God will catch it. Or, maybe by chance, it might just stick to the edge of his robe like Velcro. Perhaps he might have an opportunity to think of her when he's less occupied. And she thinks of you, her weird work friend, <laughs> white boy from Wales, and longs not to be so wrapped up anymore. For warmth to come from friendship, perhaps, something more. Her heart is playful and soft as dough, but will you be patient enough to see through? Thank you. Mm.